In the 1870s, John Poe was involved in various activities in Texas. He began his journey as a buffalo hunter, a common and arduous profession at the time, which required both survival skills and good marksmanship. After a while, Poe decided to change direction and applied his courage and talent in a new field, becoming a respected lawman. William Clark Quantrill, an infamous figure in American history, played a significant role during the Civil War. He led Quantrill's Raiders, a group famous for its guerrilla tactics. His surprise and devastating attacks against Union troops left a profound mark on the conflict. The most famous image of Josie Earp, wife of Wyatt Earp, is probably a misconception. The photograph, which shows a woman wearing a sophisticated sheer silk outfit, became widely recognized after appearing on the cover of Glenn Boyer's book, I Married Wyatt Earp, published in 1976. Pat Garrett is widely recognized as one of New Mexico's most famous lawmen, especially for having killed the infamous Billy the Kid. However, if you ask a Hispanic resident of New Mexico about the most iconic lawman, they are likely to mention El Fago Baca instead of Garrett. Ezra Allen Miner, better known by the name Bill Miner, had a criminal life that crossed various borders. Before gaining notoriety, Miner spent time imprisoned in the United States for crimes demonstrating his illicit skills. He started by stealing horses and later moved on to robbing stagecoaches. Billy Brooks, who was once a respected lawman, experienced a transformation from law enforcer to lawbreaker. His career began in Newton, Kansas, where he served as marshal. Later, Brooks moved to Dodge City, a town famous for its turbulence and violence. During his stay in Dodge City, Brooks participated in several shootouts. From a young age, McCubbin developed a keen interest in historical photographs. His adventure in the world of collections began when he bought a reproduction of a photo of Black Jack Ketchum for $50. Over the years, McCubbin not only found the original photograph of this famous bandit, but also enriched and added prestige to his collection. Photographs of the California Gold Rush are an intriguing and highly valued piece of Old West history. Among these images, studio photos of miners, such as the one highlighted here, attract much attention. These images provide a unique insight into the life and challenges miners faced at that time. Dan Thrapp, a recognized scholar of the Apache Wars, published a detailed biography on Al Sieber in 1964 titled Al Sieber, Chief of Scouts. Born in Germany, Sieber played a key role in the conflicts, serving as Chief of Scouts under General George Crook. The photo in question shows the son of Mangus Coloradus, an Apache leader who was also named Mangus Coloradus. This image was taken by Frank Randall, a renowned photographer of the time, around 1884. The Apache chief was a historical figure of great importance, considered one of the most influential indigenous leaders of the 19th century. The Santa Fe Trail, opened in 1821 by Missouri trader William Becknell, is a significant landmark in the history of U.S. trade and expansion. This historic route was the first to connect the Mexican province of New Mexico with the American western frontier, symbolizing a significant advance in international relations and territorial development of the time. This impressive group photograph, often celebrated as one of the most authentic representations of cowboys in action, is a cabinet card dated around 1885. The image was captured by photographers Charles Baker and Eli Johnston, who worked in the Douglas area of the Arizona Territory. John Burwell R., better known by the nickname Texas Jack, began his career as a cattle driver on the iconic Chisholm Trail. This job was just the beginning of a life full of adventures and great deeds. After his time as a cowboy, Texas Jack entered the world of entertainment, where he continued to make his mark. Tiburcio Vasquez, a famous outlaw of Hispanic descent, was recorded in a photograph taken around 1865. He is known as one of the most infamous criminals of the American Old West, 
due to his long criminal career that lasted about 20 years, during which he committed numerous stagecoach robberies, thefts, and burglaries. Highly coveted collectibles from the Old West include authentic photographs, autographs, and relics that belong to famous outlaws and lawmen. A notable example is this cabinet card of Ben Thompson, which stands out for combining all these valuable aspects into a single object. The 1880s cabinet card titled The Genuine Cowboy Captured Alive shows Cottonwood Charlie Nebo on the left, alongside Nicholas Janus, a Franco-American who settled as a homesteader in the Nebraska Territory. Nicholas Janus is notable for his heritage and perhaps also for being the brother of Joseph Antoine. Peter Bogardus, descended from a family famous for their firearm skills, appears in the photo holding a Remington Model 1888. He also has another gun strapped to his waist. This prowess with firearms is a family tradition, beginning with his father, known as Captain Bogardus. Between 1835 and 1885, a group of 49 former Texas Rangers engaged in a lucrative activity focused on obtaining human scalps. This practice was common mainly in Mexico, where the government hired private armies to defend the population against frequent Apache and Comanche attacks. The so-called scalp hunters, like the mercenary illustrated earlier, were rewarded according to the age and gender of the victims they captured. In the photograph dated approximately 1850, we see a bullwhacker, a type of worker symbolizing the men and sometimes women responsible for keeping freight wagons moving by guiding the oxen with their whips. Known for their endurance, courage, and tenacity, these wagon drivers played a vital role in the economy, transporting goods in ox-drawn carts. The photo, a carte de visite from 1878, shows Charles Baudre alongside his wife, Manuela. This image was marked with bloodstains due to the events at Stinking Springs on December 23, 1880. On that day, Lincoln County Sheriff Pat Garrett and his men shot Baudry, causing his death. In 1887, Ned Christie was unjustly accused of killing a U.S. Deputy Marshal. Five years later, in 1892, a group of men killed him. After his death, the lawmen tied his body to a door and, in a grotesque act, posed for a photo with this trophy alongside a group of Cherokee. Tom Horn is a notable historical figure for his various occupations. During the Apache Wars, he worked as a scout and packer. Additionally, he gained fame as an excellent lassoer and served as a Pinkerton agent. As a specialized detective and bounty hunter, Horn played a significant role in the range wars in Wyoming. Jesse James began to be known as an outlaw in 1864, when he was only 17 years old. During that period, he and his brother Frank joined Confederate rebels and carried out raids against Union troops. However, Jesse did not live to see his 35th birthday. The cabinet card photo seen here was taken in Nebraska around 1875. The Taylor's Copying Company, based in St. Louis, Missouri, was responsible for creating and distributing this card. It is worth mentioning that this item became quite well known after the shocking assassination of Jesse James. Myra Maybell Shirley, born in 1848, is widely recognized by her infamous pseudonym, Bell Star. She was involved with the Younger Gang and married the criminals Jim Reed and Sam Starr. In this 1886 cabinet card created by the Roeder Brothers of Fort Smith, Arkansas, Bell Starr appears in profile alongside U.S. Deputy Marshal Benjamin Tyner Hughes. Martha Calamity Jane Canary, like many other women of the Old West, often wore dresses. However, in this 1895 photograph captured by Henry Robinson Locke and Charles Peterson in Deadwood, South Dakota, she appears in a more emblematic manner, dressed in buckskin. When McCubbin found this unpublished photograph of Buffalo Bill Cody, it quickly became the cover of the January 2000 issue of True West magazine, marking a new beginning with the title, New Owners and a New Direction for True West. Taken in the early 1870s, the photo came with the caption, 
Cody, young and confident with a determined look, seems to challenge the world to surpass him. The death of Johnny Ringo has become a notable legend in the Arizona Territory. The famous gunslinger from Tombstone died in 1882, and to this day there is ongoing debate about whether he took his own life or was murdered. Several notable figures such as Wyatt Earp and Buckskin Frank Leslie claimed responsibility for the possible homicide. Henry Starr, a notorious real-life bank robber, played himself in a 1919 silent film called A Debtor to the Law, which reenacted his own robberies. A member of the Starr criminal family, he was a distant relative of Sam Starr, husband of the famous outlaw Bell Starr. Henry received a presidential pardon from Teddy Roosevelt after helping to control a prison riot in which Crawford Cherokee Bill Goldsby was involved. The family of Seth Bullock cherishes a photograph of the first sheriff of Deadwood in the Dakota Territory. In 1876, Seth Bullock and his partner Saul Starr made a significant move by settling in the bustling Gold Rush town, where they opened a hardware store. Bullock's arrival in Deadwood coincided with a dramatic moment, the assassination of Wild Bill Hickok by Jack McCall on August 2nd. Richard Little Dick West, known for participating in bank robberies with Bill Doolin's gang and attempted train robberies with Al Jennings' gang, met his end on April 13, 1898. On that day, he was shot and killed by a group of U.S. Deputy Marshals, led by Bill Tilgman and Heck Thomas near Guthrie in the Oklahoma Territory. John King Fisher, born in Texas in 1853, had a life full of adventures. He began his journey as a cowboy, but after being imprisoned for horse theft, his trajectory changed. Eventually, Fisher became the leader of a gang that challenged Mexican criminals. His story began a century before the first edition of our magazine. In 1885, William Notman, a photographer from Montreal, Canada, took a series of photos that included Sitting Bull and Buffalo Bill Cody. Among these images is the featured photograph. At that time, the Sioux leader had decided to join the famous Old West Showman, participating in a lengthy four-month tour with Buffalo Bill's show. Felix Tellis was taken from his family at 12 during the conflicts with the Apaches in the Arizona Territory. Although his story doesn't seem typical for someone involved in the Apache Wars, he distinguished himself as an impressive warrior and later joined the U.S. Army's Apache Scouts. In 